I'm so glad to see you today. We are going to continue learning more about Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Esau. Before we do today, let's say a prayer to get started. God, thank you for this time with these boys and girls. I pray that we would all listen and be open to what we can learn from your word so that we can be more like you. Thank you for sending Jesus for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. While Isaac and Rebecca and Jacob and Esau were living in Canaan, they experienced what is known as a drought. And a drought is when you don't have any water. It's like when it doesn't rain for a very long time and everything dries up. You don't have anything um, water to water your crops. You don't have enough water for your cattle. And so you don't have enough food and a lot of times your animals die and it can be very dangerous. And Isaac took that opportunity when there was a famine and a, a drought in the land of Canaan to move his family. He said he didn't really understand what God was doing, but they were going to go to another place that was having um, plenty of rain and they wouldn't be in the drought anymore. So they moved to a place called Gerar. And while they were in Gerar, amazing things happened. Within the first year, Scripture tells us that Isaac's wealth, so his cattle, his um, herds, increased 100-fold. And so what that tells us is that Isaac became a very wealthy, rich man while he was there. And he had lots of crops, and Isaac became very wealthy. Now, he was living in an area that was not friendly towards him. He was living near a group of people called the Philistines, and the Philistines were warriors. And they were fighters and they didn't like for good things to happen to other people and so the king there his name was Abimelech and Abimelech told Isaac I want you to get out of here they were jealous the people were jealous of Isaac's all that had happened to him and he had more money and more power than he did and Abimelech basically asked him, told him he had to leave that area. And so Isaac moved all of his cattle, his cattle, and his sheep, and his family, and his servants, and they moved to a valley. Now, it was a valley that Isaac's father, do you remember his name? Abraham, that Abraham had lived in years before. And while Abraham was there, he had dug many wells. And wells were holes in the ground that you dig really deep, and water comes up out of the ground, fresh water. Now, I don't know about you. Some people still have a well at their house. I don't have a well at my house. I go turn on a sink and water comes to me. But they would have to dig a well in order to get their water. They didn't have things like you and I have today. And so while they were there, the Philistines, to be mean to Isaac and his family, they had filled all the wells that Isaac's father had dug. They had filled them up with dirt. Well, if you fill a well up with dirt, you can't get the fresh water from it. So Isaac told his servants, he said, I want you to go and find one of my father's wells. And so he sent some of his servants, and we just have two people here to represent his servants. 
and he had told them to dig up the well, get the dirt out, so they would have enough water to drink for themselves, but also for their cattle and sheep, um, goats, all their herds, um, the servants. And sure enough, those servants worked really hard and they dug that dirt out. And pretty soon, clear, bubbling water was coming into the well. And wouldn't you know it, but the fighting people, the herdsmen of that area came and they were like, get out of here. You can't have that. That well belongs to us. Well, back in those days, if you dug the well, it was considered your land. But Isaac was a peacemaker and he said, well, this well does not belong to you. It belongs to me, but we will leave. And so Isaac told his servants to go look for another well, one of the other ones that his father had built. And sure enough, they found another one. And again, they dug that dirt out of there. And pretty soon they had that clear sparkling water and they were relieved because they knew now they had water. But those people that didn't want them there came to them again and said, this is our property. Get off of our land. This is our well and our water. And Isaac didn't want to be a, a fighter. He didn't want to be like them. And I can only imagine how the men who had dug out the, those wells felt because they had worked really hard. But Isaac said to his men, go find another one of my father's wells. And the men, they obeyed Isaac. And sure enough, they found another one of his wells. We'll put it over here. We'll let this, this one represent the third well that they found. And just put them there to represent that they found another one and they dug it out just like they had done with the first well and the second one. And when they finished digging that one out, the clear water came in and then the people left them alone. And Isaac was so grateful and he said, you know, God has made room for us in this place and God provided for them and God told Isaac that he would continue to have more children and descendants. And Isaac was so touched by God's faithfulness to him that he built an altar there. And he thanked God for his presence with him and for his care of them and for providing for them. Isaac was a peacemaker sometimes we have to choose to walk away when someone is fighting with us over something. Sometimes we do. And this was an example of Isaac being wise and following that. There is a Bible verse. Our Bible verse today comes from the New Testament, the first book, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 9. And it said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Let's say that together. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I am going to look forward to seeing you next time, and we're going to be learning more about Jacob and Esau.